What's going on, Explorers? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a minute, but I'm back. I got my mojo going, and I figured I'd make a video about this M249 Stubby that I've been working on for a large part of this quarantine. Now that it's at the end of its build cycle and it's ready to be put into regular rotation, I think it'll be an interesting episode as I go over all the parts it took to make this work, all the internal, external, and all of it coming together to make this, uh, what I would say is one of a kind M249 that has real field application. So stay tuned, I'm gonna detail the build and let's have a good time. So this gun started life as a full size M249 with a long barrel, uh, full size stock, and the standard mag that comes with all the 249s. When I first got it, it was an eBay purchase and it didn't shoot. The gearbox would turn over and the nozzle seemed to move back and forth, but nothing would feed, no BBs would come out. Big problem. So it just hung on the wall for about seven years. Then when I finally started messing with it again, first thing I did was drop the thing and crack the stock back here. If you follow my Instagram, you've probably seen some of these posts. And if you don't follow me, I maybe check it out because lately I've been doing everything through there because it's just so easy. Uh, whatever I'm doing, I just take a picture of it, take a video throw it up so you get to see the process. As the quarantine and the whole coronavirus kicked in, there wasn't a lot of games happening. So building stuff really became the biggest, most fun part of Airsoft for me during that time. I decided to get back to this thing. First thing I did, I liked the full size stock. Now, being a YouTuber of sorts, um, I use this for something and we'll get to that in a second. But I want to restore this stock to its original glory. I'm a fan of full size stocks, even though this one's a little too long. I end up gluing it back together with some JB Weld. Now, a tip I'll give you for when you use a JB Weld, it's actually white and it's gonna spill out, it's gonna look terrible. What I did was mix in a little bit of dye in there. So it turned kind of gray, almost black. And anywhere it does come out, you can't really see it because it's black on black. So that's a little tip if you're gluing with, J with something that's a color that doesn't match the gun, which for us is usually black. A little bit of dye goes a long way and doesn't really change the properties of it. Now. I'm not a huge fan of the length of the stock and all the contraption back here, the, the metal parts uh, with a flip up shoulder rest, which no one's ever used. So first thing I did was actually just create a new butt plate that thinned the stock down and replaced the original one and cut down probably felt like about half a pound of weight just cause it's a big metal chunk back there. So a 3D printed one was a lot less. Still, I didn't like the feel of it, especially with, when you get a vest on that sets it off even further. So what I did was chop it down. It took off about an inch and then created the most minimal plate here. Uh, again, 3D printed that just pops in the back. It only protrudes out about uh, three millimeters. And as you can see, it's just friction fit in there. I have one of these Ranger bands, which is just this heavy duty industrial rubber band that holds it in place. So when it's swiveled in the back end, it pops in there and it's real minimal. It has a little grip texture. And with the metal plate removed and the stock cut down, this brings it down about an inch and a half in length from the original. That's a good feel for me. I like how it feels, good resistance, but also not too far out there where I'm holding all this unsprung weight in front of me. The closer you can get it, the easier it is to support. The next big thing was to get this thing shooting because it could you could do all you want to it and if it doesn't shoot, it's sort of, what's the point, right? So of course I took out the gearbox. This gun is fairly easy to work on compared to something like an M14. Um, just a couple of screws, flip down the butt plate, get the gearbox out. Gearbox does have a lot of screws holding the shell together, but uh, it does have a quick change spring, so you can take a lot of the tension off when you pop it open. So it's actually a pretty nice gun to work on. If you've never worked on a gun, don't be afraid of a saw. In some ways, I think it's easier to work than even like a version two gearbox because the motor is included in the case and with the quick change spring, nothing jumps out at you. So I realized the gearbox had um, a couple things going wrong with it. The piston was cracked and one of the ball bearings just completely had ripped apart. So the gears didn't have a proper bearing to turn on. So everything was misaligned, could be what caused the piston to crack. So I went through and replaced all the essential parts. So after some trial and error, I got it working. Next thing I wanted to do was, since I had the gearbox open, I want to switch out the wiring. And the wiring set I picked up on evic.com actually wires it to the front which in my case worked out. Uh, there is room here in the handguard for a battery and all the wires that go with it. And there's quite a bit of wiring that goes together. And that also emptied out the stock for me for use for something else. When the gearbox was done, we're shooting uh, right around 400 FPS, which is just fine for me because then I can use it on any field. 
I, like I said, it's wired to the front. I have a big old battery that fits right in here. Nice and cozy, nothing wiggles, no noise when I'm running. The next thing was to get the accuracy right. The stock hop-up that came with this, eh. Most of these AGs use this pretty crappy pot metal hop-up that the wheel can easily slip and it's very bad for our hopping or flat hopping, any of that stuff because there's a little ball that points down on top of the bucking. So I went with a full gear hop up. Again, this took forever coming from Russia. Would not recommend if you're in a hurry, but if you got time, it's a really good hop up, really well built. Luckily you worked with this gun. Actually it was one of the reasons why I wasn't shooting, I think was the hop up. Now it's real finicky and the only hop up bucking I was able to get to work with it was a Prometheus purple bucking. Not sure why, those things seem to be a little thinner. Anything else, just it would just clog up the BBs and they wouldn't be able to push through the lip of the bucking. So I stuck with the purple Prometheus, uh, then went ahead and switched the inner barrel out. Now because I want to use the Promi purple bucking, I decided to go with an Orga barrel. And those barrels are nice because they have a flat hop cut out on the side where you could rotate the bucking and then you get a nice flat surface over your uh, window of your barrel. So this is a, I think a 605 diameter barrel. It's a little long, you could, if you look, you could see it coming out here through this uh, PTS flash hider. Again, another custom part of this build. So with the Orga barrel, I was able to keep the same purple bucking and flat hop it, but then I did my B-hop mod, which I haven't revealed much about it, but it's, it's similar to an R-hop. It's just the, the way you get there is a little bit different. Once we got the shooting, the accuracy down, then it was time to make it uh, field friendly and YouTube friendly for my needs. So moving out, first thing I did was add a top rail here. Now this was just a flat top cover with the rear side back here. Remove the side, designed the custom rail that sits on top. I had to drill some holes. It gives me a real long rail here for various things to mount. First thing I had on here was an ACOG, but um, then I decided to just go with my EOTech here to make life easier and make it a more of a spray and pray gun rather than a uh, hide and snipe type of gun. My original plan was to also then mount the zoom camera over here, but that's a little problematic because when you have the zoom camera behind the handguard, you're, you tend to stick your thumb in front of it. I didn't want that, so I decided to add a rail on the front here as well. The way this gun comes, it actually has like a heat shield that flops down that locks into these two prongs on the front side and clamps down. First I did build a rail on top of that actually. But it was a little unstable and put the zoom cam a little high, still clear of the side, but I wasn't a fan of how wobbly it was. And just getting rid of the handguard adds a lot of wobble to the barrel if it's just free floating there sort of in this uh, lower handguard. What I did was design a custom piece here. It's a two piece that clamps around the barrel, slides in tight in this uh, handguard, and obviously gives me a rail on top here to mount again a zoom camera. In this case I have the Brain Exploder Merge new and improved uh, mold injected plastic dual camera PEQ mount. I decided to put the zoom camera on the right hand side. Anytime I'm peeking around the corner it should clear that. Now if you had the front side here this is good too because it would clear the front side. As you can see I deleted the front side so not an issue for me. I could run the central camera if I wanted to. And then I have my selfie camera here on the other side of the PEQ mount that faces back towards me to make the gameplays a little bit more interesting for the viewer. This is extremely solid and sturdy. And to power it, that was the next solution. This is why the stock came in place. You can see I have a wire running here that goes through here parallel to the gearbox. There's a little cutout I made that dips it back down to the stock. And I have a big old battery that fits into the stock. Now I got lucky and I had just the perfect size battery for this. This here battery was just, I feel like it was made for this gun because it fits right into this choke point on the stock. And without anything, I have a little bit of Velcro here from a previous use, keeps it there perfectly sturdy. And with actually room to spare, I could put even a bigger battery in there if need be. But as you can see, it fits right in there. And then just throw the cover over it. And we're done. So I have Tons of power here, brings some of the weight to the back and I could power this camera over like a two day milsim. For me, it's really important to hide the wire. I personally can't stand when there's some power bank attached to a side of a gun and there's just wires everywhere. 
So even though it's already clean, this part here where it reaches from the body to the camera, uh, this wire looked ugly, it flopped, it would get in the way of the selfie camera. So I designed these little clips that slide over the wire and then clamp onto the rail. Real simple, uh, one piece, no moving parts, no nothing, and just keeps everything tied down. I'll probably add these to my Shapeway shop, so if you're ever running cables, now might not be for a zoom camera, maybe you're running a flashlight, uh, you could quickly tuck it in there, clamp it on, and it's really easy to rearrange, simple, and sits pretty much flush with the top of the rail. So if anything's going over the top of it, it shouldn't really get in the way either. Now on the side here, I have some dummy bullets. What I recommend is if you ever use dummy bullets, go ahead and zip time to this piece here so you don't have to worry about them flopping out while you're adjusting hop up or um, messing with the gun. This keeps them in place and then when you lock it down, they really have nowhere to go. Now you might have noticed this box mag here that it looks a little bit different. It's sort of a hybrid between the standard, you know, the green slanted box mag that comes with this gun and then the tiny nutsack version you could buy, which is typically in that woodland camo. And it's either, neither one of those. This is a custom made pool spring, as in flash mag style box mag that's totally uh, manually operated. There's no batteries, no sensors in here. All you do is crank on the wire that winds up the high, high cap mechanism inside. And then as the BBs pour in, they get fed up through this tube into this M4 style adapter which is from the original box mag, and then into the hop-up, and then it works just like any other box mag. Now when building this, I made it a little wider than the standard M249 box mag. As you can see, it pretty much fits this cavity between the trigger guard and the hand guard. So that gave me a little bit more room, more capacity. Not exactly sure how many BBs this thing can eat, but uh, when I tested it, I think I poured in a 3500 bottle of HPA BBs in there, no problem. Uh, to pour it in, there's actually a, a, a flap here. It's uh, again 3D printed, same material as this buttstock. It's a flexible material. So you can see this has a little bit bent to it. So the flap is made out of the same material. All you do is flap it down, pour your BBs in, and then the flap will spring back up and hold them in there, no problem. So this was my own solution. I've done this to my M60 before. I'll put up that video here if you want to kind of see more of the details on building one of these mags. Uh, but it works really well in here. I then went ahead and uh, hydro dipped it in this woodland scheme, I guess, to kind of give it that sort of vintage look. I don't know, came out okay. Uh, but the most important thing is that it works well. Pull this string and then you have about 250 rounds before you have to pull that again. Works really well and I'm so glad I don't have to deal with batteries and slipping gears. So the other thing I did was uh, shorten the barrel. I used to have the full size barrel, twisted it out. As I mentioned, I put a PTS flash hider on here. Additionally, I got rid of the bipod here to cut down on the weight some more. And I added a, this uh, Haley strategic uh, sling in here, wherever it would fit through this opening here and wrapped around the stock. And that glue really did a hell of a job back here because there's a lot of torque on the stock from this sling and it held up just fine. That feels like it wraps it up. As you can see, a lot of work went into this thing, both externally to make it a little shorter, a little more maneuverable, a little less heavy, and internally to actually make it function and be able to handle sustained fire and do it all with accuracy. So I had fielded this gun before and I gotta say I wasn't blown away by it. Um, Everything was there. The accuracy was a little, I had a little bit of a curve in the accuracy. Um, so that's my fault. I think I sense remedied that and I'll need to take it out again. But it's still such a heavy gun. Even though it's compact, it's so much heavier than like having a, you know, a SMG or an, a regular AEG. Um, it, and it's even heavier than my Mark 43, even though that's a bigger gun. And just, I don't know, maybe Classic Army just builds these things like tanks. I still have need to get used to it a little bit and maybe come up with a few techniques for how I play with it, maybe a little more stationary. I like the build, it does everything it's supposed to. Now it's just time for me to acclimate to it. So, thanks for watching you guys. Anything that's relevant will be in the description below. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.